Trapped by the belief that I'm not good enough, bound by the limitations and the lies that consumed my world, this was me. It wasn't until I took the biggest leap in my life to know and trust the power within. And it was at that moment I made a choice. My past will not define me anymore. Hello, I am Terry Cardula, and I know I am not alone in this. Over the years, I have found that the number one mistake that we make is that we get in the way of our own success story. Yes, I said it. On this show, together we'll tackle limiting beliefs, self-sabotage, getting stuck, fear, doubt, overwhelm, and the imposter syndrome. Join us on this journey designed to transport you beyond your limitations to a world where anything is possible. This is Talking with Terry. Hi, and welcome back to Talking with Terry, where we have powerful conversations to transform your life and your business. And our guest today is Jodi Krangle. She's been a voice actor since 2007 and has worked with clients from major brands all over the world, including Dell, BBVA, and Kraft. Um, she's also a singer and has put out her own jazz album, Blues and Traditional Tunes. Um, I can't wait to hear a little bit more about that as well. Um, and she also has her very own podcast called Audio Branding, The Hidden Gem of Marketing. So welcome, Jodi. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited. <laughs> yes. Okay. So I just want to dive in because you just have this fantastic, fun energy about yourself. And I just can't <laughs> wait to hear a little bit more about you. We're meeting through this PodMax ex experience. And mm -hmm. I am, I'm excited about like where this is going to lead and, you know, the connections and collaborations that's happening. And so for folks that don't know you yet, um, tell us a little bit about your journey and how you got to be where you're at today. Oh, it's a long journey. <laughs> <laughs> and it's 30 seconds or less. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Uh, yeah, you probably get this a lot from a lot of your guests. Um, my journey to being a voice actor, which is what I do all day, every day now, and what I love to do, uh, it, it was long and winding. A lot of it had to do with computers. I, I was an early adopter of the computer back in 1986. <laughs> that was my first computer. Uh, the internet, 1995. I loved it. I did SEO and internet marketing for many, many years. And then I got really, really bored. When Google became the only game in town, I just got <laughs> so bored. <laughs> Oh, my so goodness. I decided, yeah, decided I'd do something different and voiceover. Well, I've been a singer all my life and my family is very musical. So voice mm. sound was always big. And so I just decided to go for it. And I researched online. That was what I was doing. I wasn't going in my own backyard. Yeah. I was looking on the Internet and getting, you know, um, instruction and yes. encouragement from the, the other people in the field who were kind enough to take me under their wing, you know, and oh, it worked really fantastic. well. We're going to have to connect afterwards because seriously, like Maya, um, I could not carry a tune if I tried. <laughs> we will be showing my singing abilities. That's I, would, okay. I would scare people. <laughs> so um, I love finding, you know, from folks like what has been kind of that biggest challenge or barrier or block that you've had to come overcome in order to get to where you're at. It's a really good question. I would have to say introversion. <laughs> oh, uh, ooh, I've never yeah. had this conversation before. Oh, yes. Okay, let's, yeah. let's dive in. Let's hear about it. Well, well, part of what I say about being an introvert is that it isn't necessarily that you're shy. I mean, I'm in a business where I need to be on at certain times, yes. you know, authentically, but still on. Yes. And I need to make sure that I feed my own mental health in that I have enough time after I do that to sit back and have some peace. Because yes. that's how I replenish my energy. So, but I had to learn that. That is definitely yes. something I had to learn. And I am like very firmly an INFJ. I don't know if you know, like, yes, any of these. with the, with yeah. the Enneagram. Exactly. <laughs> She's so, talking about Enneagrams, okay? <laughs> yes. Yeah. But that's Myers Briggs, right? Um, I the, think so. INGF is, uh, oh, you're, you're, you're right. You're right. It's, um, you're right. Uh, it's Myers yeah. Briggs, not Enneagram. Yeah, the Enneagram. Yeah, it's company. yeah, <laughs> it's one or the other. <laughs> it's Myers but, Briggs. <laughs> yeah, but apparently the INFJs are kind of like unicorns because there's like three percent of the population that is this, 
But I will tell you that I saw a thread in Facebook just recently where a bunch of voice actors were asked what their Myers-Briggs number, like letter was, letters. Yes. And <gasps> like oh, so many of us are INFJs. It's funny. Oh my funny. gosh, you found your unicorn tribe. <laughs> I definitely found oh my, my unicorn tribe. Yeah, <laughs> it's it. amazing. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's a hard thing to overcome because I think a lot of people do equate it with being shy, but that's not really what it is. It's, it's about how you replenish your energy. Agreed. And so, yeah, yes. so I have to make, I have to make very certain that I don't book too many things together, that I don't have interviews or that I'm not interviewing people too close together. Other people can batch these things. I can't. I just yes. can't. Yes. <laughs> so I need to know that about myself. <laughs> yeah. And I think this is really important because I think um, once we know this, we can figure out like how we, and you're absolutely right. Like um, it's, it's not whether you're shy or reserved or anything like that is it's how you replenish your energy and how you fuel back up. And, and this goes back to kind of your self-care. And um, I always joked with people because I was extraordinarily shy when I was, I mean, so shy. Um, but I, um, I didn't want to, I, I didn't talk to people. I didn't, you know, but over time I became like truly an extrovert. And so I would call myself an, a true extrovert because that's how I refuel. So conversations like this, like it just, it fuels me. Right. And something yeah. like this for you might drain you because you have to be <laughs> kind of on. Right. Um, yeah. and you know, what's interesting is I've, I've seen many professional speakers over the years, I would say a good uh, amount of them are introverts, which is interesting because they do kind of have to flip, flip the switch to be on mm -hmm. and go on stage. And then when they come off they're they're very different to be around. Right. Um, and so, but you have to learn, like, how do we manage that and how are we, you know, um, taking care of ourselves to fuel up. So, yeah. so what you was have it? to play to your strengths, right? Yeah. yeah. So how, so I feel like this is a journey for everyone you know, in this process of figuring out like what works for them and what doesn't, like, what mm -hmm. was that, what was that for you that really started to, you know, turn on the light bulb of? You know, I think when I first became self-employed and that was back in the year 2000, so it's been a while for me, figuring out my best way of working, how I got the most things done in the smallest amount of time or what happened to me when I had certain deadlines or when I knew I had to be doing things with people on, you know, for a lengthy period of time and yeah. understanding how I reacted to that and how it stressed me out. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, figuring out how to come back from that and say, okay, well, so I can do this for a certain amount of time as long as I have, like, say I'm going to a conference. If I'm going to a conference, like I, I used to do voiceover conferences all the time. I still do occasionally, but obviously the last year and a half has been less of that. <laughs> yes, 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 um, yes. Yeah. But when I go to a conference, I have to spend some time in public, either going to watch a workshop or having coffee with friends or whatever and being social and whatever. But I need to make sure that I have a room that I can go to and just chill for a bit. And yes. it, in complete silence, by the way, like for me, I actually need silence. It's not listening to music. It's not watching television. It's not having five things on at once in the yes. room. Yes. Well, that's sitting, still that external you know, stimuli that's like, rah, yes. rah, you know, like less stimulus. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Stimulus. Yes. I love it. And, and I think it's a key note is like no roommates, right? Like just by yourself. Oh, yeah. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. And I get more from one on one conversations than I do group conversations. I much prefer to spend an hour or two with a friend or two friends having coffee and just yeah. having a discussion as opposed to sitting in the middle of a party with like 50 people or 100 people or yes. whatever yelling across the room at people no no yeah especially so, not for a voice actor <laughs> yes for, so let me ask you this because um i found this to be true for some folks that and not all folks but um for folks that are more the introverts because they're there you we have to kind of preserve our energy right um and some some folks that are introverted are also empaths. Are you would you consider yourself an empath, like where you're taking on other people's energy as well? Yeah, I think it has that kind of a component, component to, it. to it. Okay. Yeah, uh, and and that might be partially why I can't spend too much time being yeah. social and getting drained because yeah, it is very draining to to feel 
all the stuff that's going on around me very deeply and then try not to get weird about it (laughs) (laughs) and go away, you know? (laughs) Because I will tell you, I meet so many, I meet so many empaths. And so whether you're an introvert or an empath, I think this message can relate to you. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that, um, uh, I, I was, I was speaking in Dallas a couple weeks ago and I do this energy or this exercise at the very end. And it just raises the vibrations of the room. Mm-hmm. And I tell everyone, I said, this is a fantastic exercise, except for my empath, because mm-hmm. it's like, it's like, I, like I'm punching them in the gut when I do this exercise. So I always have to like pause and say, okay, okay. I need everyone who's an empath. I was like, I don't need to know who you are you know who you are. (laughs) I need you to protect your energy for this exercise. And so I go through just a really quick, maybe a 30 second exercise, which is what I have them do is I imagine them stepping into kind of a, a a bubble, Mm -hmm. like, you know, those like iridescent bubbles that you blow, you know, like the kids blow and just imagine that you're sitting, putting yourself in this bubble and you know, it's iridescent it's moving and it's flowing. And I set the intentions for them is that only allow love and light to come through because otherwise it is so much. And I was like, you'll thank me later because I had, I had a couple, when I did, when I began doing this exercise, um, I had a couple of empaths come up to me like, Terry, like that's a fantastic exercise. But for us empaths, it was like, like it was just so much. It was so overwhelming. And so I was like, I kind of whammied them and I'm like, okay, I don't want to, I mean, (laughs) I don't want to whammy people. Okay. So, um, if you look at the definition of INFJ, it's in there. Your unicorn, <laughs> yes, right. Yeah. And so <laughs> my unicorn population, I love it. I've never had a unicorn on here, so I'm excited. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I probably have lots of unicorns in the audience, so you guys can relate to Probably, um, yeah. <laughs> but you're absolutely right. And so, you know, two parts is like, one is if, if you are the, you know, um, triple black, you know, double unicorn, um, <laughs> which you're, um, I'm doing it. Um, is like, how do you, you know, protect your energy a, but also how do you refuel up, you know? And so if that exercise is helpful for the audience is to, you just, just imagine, and there's lots of ways you can protect your energy. That's one of many, but um, I have a, a good friend that he just imagines like, you know, roses flowing around him and just allowing that to be the protection. Or I used oh, to have I a like client, yeah. I used to have a client and she would always wear, um, always wore pants with belt loops. And so she grounded it. She anchored in every time she would hit like her belt loop on her right side, she imagined that she was like an astronaut and it was like fueling up her, you know, like being all <laughs> puffy. And then she'd have like a big old, like, um, screen that would come down and around and go clink, you know? And so she was like, Hey, this is my visual. This is my experience That's so um, great. <laughs> of feeling like I'm protecting my energy. So there's lots yeah. of ways that you can protect your energy to, you know, maintain that energy. Cause you know, you, you don't have a lot to give because you need to conserve that, you know, conserve that energy. Um, and then like you said, is like making sure that you have some time to really, um, give yourself permission. Um, cause I think some of the folks that out there, especially when you're feeling like you have to be on mm-hmm. and especially if you're in a conference or something that's, you know, a two day or a three day or, you know, a five day event, it's exhausting. Um, it you totally know, is. I to, can't have roommates. It's, it's gotten to the point where I can't at this point have roommates at a conference. I need my own room. Yeah. Just, you well, know, I, mean, I know me. Yeah, yeah, I get it. And I'm the opposite. I'm always like, ooh, I wonder who could be a roommate. You know, because yeah, I'm like yeah. the opposite, right? Like, <laughs> I think I've, I've gone and, and, and done events maybe twice without having roommates. But I'm like, ooh, this is exciting. This is fun. So, yeah. Um, Um, so what would, you know, anything else that you can share with our listeners that would be a great, you know, tool or strategy, you know, and supporting them in, you know, kind of this journey that you've had to go through and discover about yourself, about being uh, an introvert and, and how, um, you know, you can best, you know, be at your A level game Mm -hmm. and being able to nurture this as well. I think that you need to be kind to yourself. And I think that, um, that is a hard thing, especially for empaths very hard thing because we are so awful to ourselves especially creatives (laughs) oh my goodness there are things i say in my own head to myself that no one would ever get away with saying to me yes (laughs) right so i have to be very very careful about not being too hard on myself if i'm overloaded just take a minute (laughs) yeah you know, just step back, just, you know, say, go to the washroom, like get, use the restroom, <laughs> just do whatever you need to do to just get yourself away for a moment, give yourself some breath and then come back. 
And, you know, it's just, you you have to be kind to yourself. That's, I I just think we're so awful to ourselves and expect so much while we're giving so much. And I think that we need to be kind. (laughs) Yeah. And I think that's a lot of gold right there because I, I know, and you're an entrepreneur, you know, you're, you know, self-made entrepreneur. And I think for, and most of my audience is entrepreneurs or business owners. And I think we can be our own worst critic and we can beat ourselves up so much that we do find ourselves in the spiral and it doesn't help whatever, if we are feeling overwhelmed or stressed or, Mm -hmm. you know, are we doubting ourselves or self-sabotage, like anything that we're doing that is not going to help us. It's not going to be a contribution, you know, to supporting us in our highest and greatest good. Like our, you know, what mm-hmm. are we here to do? What is our passion? What is our purpose? If I can and mention we'll... one more thing. Yeah, do that it, please. Line. Um, outsourcing. Let me just tell you outsourcing. <laughs> oh my God. My gosh. Yes. I love you. <laughs> yeah. Well, because, because if we're going to be entrepreneurs and live our best lives and do our best work, we need to do the work that we feel we are best at, as opposed to Agreed. wasting our time doing stuff we don't like and that someone else would do way better than we do. <laughs> yes. And I get that, that it's scary. You know, when you're good, when you're getting out there and you're doing, um, you know, you're building your business, you're building your brand. And, but it is looking at, you know, what can I outsource that I mm-hmm. dislike the most? Um, there's a fantastic book out there that I absolutely, I feel like it's kind of like the closest thing to a business Bible, if there is a business Bible and it's called the e Re- revisited by Michael Gerber. And, and he mm-hmm. talks about like, you know, having, creating a, a company flow chart and, you know, within that company flow chart is like, as an entrepreneur, you're doing all these different hats. You're wearing every single hat in the business. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, and it's figuring out what do you feel called to do? What do you feel um, is the easiest and is in your wheelhouse, your zone of brilliance? And Mm -hmm. then let's create the plan to outsource the rest of this because, you know, that creates much, much unneeded stress, you know? So the faster we can get there and the faster we can, you know, start to, you know, incorporate um, other people doing the things that they're best at is absolutely 100%. So I think that's a great- Yeah, I think it can happen a lot faster than people think, too, because the minute that you give that job to someone else, you can focus more on what you do best. And that, you know, let's let's be plain about this. That makes you more money. Exactly. (laughs) So that you actually hard. I think that's sometimes a hard concept for people to grasp because they're like, wait, I'm going to be paying this money to make money. (laughs) Right. And so and, you know, even if you just, you know, a couple of those tasks, like if just having a VA that takes away the paperwork or the um, Oh, yeah. I have some of my, some of my clients have, um, you know, bigger teams where they can outsource that, but it's always looking at what can you, I'm always asking them, what can you take off your plate that is not mm-hmm. serving you? Or what can you take off the plate that is not, um, bringing you joy? Because what happens from an energetic perspective, if I'm spending my time on this one task and I'm like, Oh, Oh, for example, yesterday I was, I was talking to one of my clients and she's like dealing with stuff that she a, should not be doing. She was dealing with, um, <laughs> Uh, bookkeeping stuff and oh. getting her getting her taxes prepped and I'm like and she literally is like oh oh my goodness why and so what's happening energetically is she is like coming down that scale of vibration and she's going fast into frustration fast into anger fast into re- resentment and now she's at this vibrational level that's like this mm-hmm. and now she's expecting yeah. to still continue tr- generating leads from a higher vibration well it's it's impossible and so I'm like okay your task is get what you need to get done, outsource that bad boy. And you have the next, like I gave her four hours to get what she needed to do. So that way she was like done with that because that was an energetic suck for her business. Yes. Yeah. And then I was like, and now you're going to go back and do this act exercise, which is going to get her back into high vibration, which is going to also allow her to attract more into her company uh, yeah. with more ease. And so it can be as simple as that. And I think that's a great point that you bring up is like, when you're doing things that you're not supposed to be doing or not, not um, well, when in you're, you're alignment doing something, with. Yeah, yeah. If you don't enjoy it, like I don't mind my bookkeeping because I'm both right and left brained. Yes. <laughs> so I actually like knowing you really what's are going on. Okay. Just, just admit <laughs> it. Just admit it. <laughs> yeah. So do what you like to do. Keep in touch. Yeah. And in fact, I think that as a business owner, you need to do everything in your business to know how it should be done yeah. before you pass it on to someone yeah. else. Yeah. But, you know, at the same time, whatever you like doing, <laughs> you can keep doing yes. and just pass off everything else <gasps> to someone <Yes>. else. <laughs> I love it. 
Brilliant. Okay. So Jody, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for being Thank on you. here and some <laughs> great nuggets from, you know, our convert, our short conversation here. And so I would love for the listeners to know how can they reach out to you? How can they connect with you? How can they have further conversations with you? Um, you know, to connect with you a little bit further. Sure. Um, my voiceover website is at voiceoversandvocals.com. So anyone who's interested in voiceovers or who needs voiceovers, I do mostly commercial and corporate narration. So happy to talk with you if you need a voice I'm for your start brand. I'm going to doing a <laughs> radio voice. Hello, <laughs> no day. <laughs> yeah. The, the thing about voiceovers is that um, these days, actually, it really, uh, it's all about authenticity because no one wants someone to put anything on. They just really don't. So I'm just me when I do stuff. <laughs> it's just Okay, thank knowing... you for just giving me like, I don't, you know, I, and you probably see this. I, I'm going to digress for a second. <laughs> it's okay. You yeah. probably see this a lot in the sense of, um, people not liking their voice. Cause I think that's probably the number one thing uh, when anyone's doing recordings, Facebook, I have clients that are like, they're doing um, videos for their website or things. And I'm like, Oh, I don't do the videos because mm -hmm. I don't like my voice. I don't do interviews because I don't like my voice. I bet yeah. you get that a hundred percent, right? I do. And actually that leads into where else you can find me. The audio branding podcast is at audiobrandingpodcast.com. And if you don't like your voice, I would really suggest that you listen to the episode. And it's a two-parter that I have with a woman named Cynthia Jai, who is a voice coach from Singapore, actually, who helps powerful CEOs sound powerful. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Yeah. Well, what's her name again? Cynthia? Cynthia Jai, but it's spelled Z-H-A-I, I believe. Okay. I'm going to check that out yeah. um, because I might be able to, re you know, send out, send that out to other folks that are yeah. having that same struggle and challenge, right? Definitely. Because you're absolutely right. When you're standing in your when you're being authentic and mm -hmm. you're standing 100% in your power, there's power in your presence. And, oh, yeah. you know, if you have all of that in alignment, you are a force to be reckoned with. So it's very powerful. I love yeah. it. Uh, Jody, <laughs> thank you so much for being here. I can't wait to connect further with you and, and learn Thanks. more about you and just continue to, the, this conversation. So this was uh, really great. You're a great fantastic. interviewer. I appreciate ah, it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I will put all of her details in the show notes, everyone please reach out to her, send her some love, connect with her, collaborate <laughs> with her. Um, and um, Jody, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you. <laughs> I am so grateful that you joined me for this episode. If you've enjoyed this, then there's just one thing that I would like you to do. Click to subscribe and leave me a rating and review. As my way to thank you, let's connect for a free consultation. Just reach out to me at talkingwithterry, that's T-E-R-I dot com to book your time.